Welcome back everyone on part two on how to restore your trashed Porsche 911 floors. Garage time. Last week I left off by saying I needed to make a couple special tools to reach some of those blind areas in the tunnel. So I did, that's what this is, kind of a question mark. This allows me to go inside the tunnel and then hammer from the top. Uh, this I'm pretty certain is gonna work, but I made another one too. Okay, there's this contraption, which is a couple loose parts. Um, it's got some feet on it. And this is to restore the jack pad area. That's a pretty common area that gets distorted. Um, I'll show you mine, it's just, kind of pushed up a little more than it should be. So this contraption is designed to, you know, pull it back out. It's kind of a puller as opposed to using a hammer. So here's a view of that whole rail and this is how it's supposed to look. This is the rocker panel and then it has a nice rolled edge and then the pinch weld is here. But as I go towards the front where the jacking point is, this pinch weld starts to become depressed in. So these areas here are no longer horizontal, they're angling up and this is completely crushed up. So my idea is to pull this out without really affecting the rocker position and the door gap. So the way this cobbled together uh, group of parts work is that it's going to use these feet here against the high portions. And then this section here uh, has a little tab on it. This is going to get welded to the pinch weld and then it has a bolt on the bottom. I'm going to pull it flat. So I'm going to uh, do it just like I would a dent. Um, you know, it's, it's first in last out. So I'm going to start here and get the areas that are not completely depressed and then work my way towards the front. Here's kind of a measure of how far off this rail is. So I have this, this stick kind of following the rear here, and then it starts to deviate quite a bit as you get to the front. So like I said, that's about the height of the flange, somewhere about a half an inch or so. Okay, here's my rig welded on, and I just have a kind of a sacrificial plate here to sort of protect the, uh, the metal here from getting a dent in it. But this contraption here can slide, and I have it situated to where this is supported, this foot here is supported on the, the highest point on the outside, and then it's supported here on the highest point on the inside. So now I'm just going to use my socket and uh, tighten this nut, and it's gonna pull this flat, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I just started to notice that it's, it's, it's caving in up here a little bit. So um, it is moving, but to prevent this portion, which is, which is fine, from having a dent in it, I'm gonna put another uh, big bar across the, the front there so it distributes the weight. I only want it to bend in the section I want it to bend. So you gotta go slow on that kind of stuff. <laughs>
Okay, hopefully you can see this, but this pull definitely straightened it out. So you can see right up until where this is welded onto the car, it's pretty straight. And then just after that, that flange goes and disappears. So now it's time to move it over, you know, two, three inches and repeat. But it's certainly moving the metal and I was able to prevent the uh, outside rail from being crushed. A little more hammer and dolly work on the inside and this is gonna hopefully come out really nice. Okay, I'm about to try pole number two, so I have it in position. You can see I moved it over a pretty substantial amount. I don't need to do a continuous amount. Hopefully it's not too lumpy. I could probably go back in between if I need to, but uh, I'm gonna start cranking on it, make sure that things are straightening out the way I want. This is pull number two and it's starting to straighten out. I'm also keeping an, um, an eye guys here on this uh, door gap. I, I really don't think it's gonna move because the way I've designed this pulling device, it's only working in a local area, but I am paying attention to the door gaps and making sure nothing is, is changing here on the body work. That would be a nightmare. This is the flange, kind of where I started. There's pull number one, pull number two. Pull number three is still attached and it's already really, really straight, except for maybe this corner. I might do one more pull on the very, very corner, but it's looking really good. So this is still very dented. I'm not going to do this portion until this part is fixed because this is where most of the strength is. So once this is um, fixed and straight, then I'll come back and do this. This portion here is actually pretty easy. This is just the thin sheet metal. But I was a little surprised how easy it is to move this pinch weld. Uh, this is not a strong part of the car, at least where my fingers are. Over here in the corner, it's a little stronger. So I'll do one more right here. But uh, if you guys have a car like this at home, don't pick it up right here. Maybe right here, but preferably over here, but don't hit this part. And if you're taking it to a shop, you know, either supervise them or make sure they uh, are experienced in Porsche because these cars aren't as strong as they should be in this corner.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this rail got straightened out. This pinch weld area is pretty flat across. I'll show you from underneath with that straight edge too. But you can see where I uh, attached the little puller in four places. One there on the very forward corner, one there just underneath this body line. And then this one is the third one, and then here's the fourth one. It's a little hard to do with one hand, but it's mostly flat. Um, there's still some welds, like right here. I need to grind that one down. That's just left over from the little puller I made. So it is looking pretty good, and it's lining up back here with the rear portion that was unbent. So I'm calling this a success. Also, I did a little work to this, this, this drain hole right here. Um, I think these get filled up with a piece of plastic, but this was really caved in, and I just put that same tool on it and welded to it and kind of pulled it out just a little bit like a dent puller. But it's not perfect. I need to go back and kind of clean up this hole a little bit but it's roughly in the same, same sort of plane. So I can just add a little bit of undercoating here and, and just kind of touch up the thickness so it looks like it's all the same level. This is as far as I'm gonna take it, you guys. The, uh, the next order of business is this huge dent here. And you can see how right here it's kind, of, it's kind of hammered up. This is sort of just going uphill right here and then downhill. So I'm gonna bolster this up with my floor jack, go inside and uh, give it the, uh, the hammer treatment. I know I just said don't jack up your car right here, but I'm actually not jacking it up. I'm just preventing uh, the suspension and, and, and any sort of things collapsing as I, as I push down. Okay, here's a view from inside the car. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here, but you can see this is the part that's really pushed up. And a lot of what I just fixed is hidden underneath this large tunnel structure that gives support to the car. So what I can get to is everything that's left here. This is going to be a little bit easier to fix than what I just did. But you can see the damage from the inside. That's all going to get just pushed down right now. Okay, from this view, most of the bad stuff is out on the entire floor pan. So this is now sitting pretty flat. Checked it with a straight edge, not too shabby. And then this passenger side is still sitting a tad bit low. I may have to shrink the metal a little bit over there because it's been uh, hammered a lot. Everything else is sitting nice and flush. Here's another view of that passenger side. And then here's the driver's side. You can see along the sill there, it's no longer pushing up. Everything is pretty horizontal from both top and bottom. The pedals should have no problem going back in. It, it definitely wasn't this straight before. This is looking really pretty good yeah all the way back to here really straight this is probably the worst section on this side of the car there's about an eighth of an inch gap there i'm just going to make that up with some undercoating okay now it's time to go back to this tunnel area from the inside and see if i can use that question mark tool to really push this section here down Okay, last video I used this hydraulic kind of pincher device to open up this uh, floor pan a little bit, at least create some more space between the tunnel and the floor because it had been crushed in. So now um, I'm going to remove this because this I can't maneuver it into the corners. Okay, one of the areas that was really hard to get to was these rear corners. So now I can put this in here like that and then hammer down this device can you know, work in all these hidden areas and just get that thing flatter. Okay, here's a quick status update. You can see I had to strip some of the undercoating off the bottom here. This is the area that I can't access with my tools inside the tunnel. The tunnel has a seat belt uh, attachment above it and there's extra metal in there. I just, I just can't get enough tools in there. So I'm gonna have to use my puller or just a you know, dent puller or something to you know pull this out flat but this is the last section remaining everything else is finished this piece right here uh, which was probably the worst off is looking really nice i got the curvature back in it and this depression here is all lined up with the ones adjacent to it so so this part here is, is looking really nice i just have to fix this last dent and then it's done
And that concludes the floor pan restoration. As always, I got a little carried away with the project here, but as they say, this is the time to do it. These bare metal spots will get uh, epoxy primed and then I'm going to touch up the undercoating probably with a brush at first and then come back and spray over it to kind of blend it in just the best I can. So now it's time to clean up this interior area one more time and get ready to paint it. I was just cleaning out this area with my vacuum and my air compressor nozzle and I got some bad news. My new air compressor just died. I just replaced my air compressor of about 25, 30 years with this one in December. And um, you know, it's been working great. It, I, I really like the bigger capacity, but literally sparks were shooting out of the motor. So I stopped what I was doing. Luckily, Ingersoll Rand is pretty good in terms of service. The guy came out the following day and took a look at it and said, yeah, your motor is, uh, is, is, is burnt out. Um, he seemed to think that it wasn't the wiring, but it could be just a dusty environment. Uh, I've obviously been doing lots of sanding and stuff, so he recommended taking some precautions about getting a lot of dust into it. I don't know. So the compressor is kind of a big bummer. I was going to be shooting the black epoxy primer on the back. I was kind of looking forward to seeing it all one color, kind of like I did in the trunk area but it's just not meant to be. I guess the message this week uh, is on the, on the positive note that the floor pans, you know, a lot of people have um, floor pans that are sort of poor shape just over the years, these things get abused, but everything's fixable, just takes a little bit of effort. And uh, that's what I'm trying to show in these videos, a little bit of how to, and also just motivate you guys to tackle difficult things. Take care, we'll see you next week.